Now let's uh, get analysis. We're now joined by Professor Hartmut Winkler, Professor of Physics at the University of Johannesburg. Prof, uh, I want us uh, to start where we make sense of it all. Uh, firstly, how important is the step by government, just considering we are talking about an additional 2,500 megawatts nuclear power, more than what uh, we are seeing at Kuburg uh, power station? Uh, and secondly, how will the process then unfold? Uh, yes, well, I'm, I'm personally, I think I'd be willing to put my head on the block that this plant is not going to be built. Uh, we've been here twice before in the last 15 years, and in both cases, the process had to be aborted, uh, largely because of the way it was handled. And unfortunately, I don't get the sense that, uh, that uh, we've learned very much from those previous occasions. Uh, there's a whole lot of statements that were made by the minister and elsewhere, which are just simply not true. A nuclear is not the cheapest technology by long shot. It would be if you're simply running a plant which already exists, but you first of all have to build it. In order to build it uh, uh, to the specifications that they're talking about, we are uh, talking about 250 billion rand. Now that's not money that's just lying around here. That's money for which the, the government, ultimately because Eskom can't afford this, the government would have to take a loan. And such a loan has to be repaid. So that uh, then goes in addition to the 250 billion rand. As it, it also, is it the most reliable? Well, we've had lots of uh, uh, instances at Kuber where simply only for most of the last uh, uh, five years, uh, only one unit has been operating at Kuburg at the time. So it's not that this is just simply uh, runs nonstop. They, it, they have to be switched off. Uh, Kuburg is actually a good example of what can go wrong uh, with these uh, nuclear builds. We were told three years ago that this uh, life extension exercise at Kuburg would take would be finished within 10 months and then afterwards uh, everything would be fine and it would cost uh, just under 20 billion. Well, it's now two years later and we're still about one year from completion if we reach it then. And it's very clear that it's going to cost a lot more than that. So I, I absolutely don't understand the logic behind this step now, especially because, uh, as has been announced in the news, in the last few days, government has developed a draft electricity plan for uh, the, the, the next few years. Now, this plan is supposed to be up for public discussion. Now, how are we going to have a, a public discussion about a, a topic like electricity and what power uh, 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 generating sources to use if government's already decided that they want to go ahead with this, it just doesn't make any sense. I think they're opening themselves up for another legal challenge again. Mm. So it, it, this, uh, it, I also find it strange that this is an announcement comes in December. If mm. one looks at uh, the controversial announcement in South Africa, they've always been made just before Christmas because that's when people have their minds are somewhere else. And this seems to be no different. And the cynics will say before Christmas or before an election, Prof. But how worried are mm. you, given what the, the you know the uh, Deputy Director General of uh, for Nuclear said in terms of uh, the details at hand at the po at the moment? He said, in as far as the RFP is concerned, they're not able or not in a position to detail the the shape or form or format of that RFP. Exactly. They, at the moment, they don't really know what this is going to look like, whether this is going to be one uh, big plant, uh, in which case I, I think the only uh, possible builder that would come into consideration is Russia, simply because the specifications, they want uh, 2,500 megawatts. Now, the Russian reactors are 1,200. So two Russian reactors come to almost exactly 2,500 megawatts. If you look at other possible countries like Korea or China, or France, if you multiply that by one or two or three, you just simply don't come close to that number. So it, it, it's already uh, strange that uh, this number was agreed on. So it, it's, uh, yeah, to me, it, it doesn't look like uh, it, it, like a good way of, of, of going about things. Mm. Uh, my next question was going to talk about uh, the comments that were made by Minister Ramakhopa in as far as the how expensive this was going to be or how much it would cost. Mm. You've already answered that question. Um, but he also said that it was clean and safe. Uh, what do you make of that? Okay, clean, not in the sense that you end up with radioactive waste. Now, the radioactive waste from Kuburg is basically all still lying on site. Some of it's been transported to the Northern Cape, but uh, the most uh, uh, um, polluted one is still on site. So there is no, ultimately, no final solution. Uh, and that's a, that's a worldwide problem. 
okay, you might say, well, it's, you can likely stay there for the next 500 years or whatever, but it's, it's, it's something that somebody will have to deal with uh, at, at some point or other. Is it clean that it doesn't have uh, emissions? Yes, that is the one big plus of nu nuclear. Uh, like uh, wind and, and, and solar, uh, it doesn't uh, adversely uh, affect uh, uh, global, uh, global warming in the sense that it doesn't have the carbon emissions that, that go with, uh, with coal plants and gas plants. So that's, a, that's the, the one positive that nuclear uh, technology would have, uh, but that's offset by the cost and simply by the manner in which these sort of builds are, seem to be arranged. We keep on being told that it's going to be finished well, that, I heard the minister say three to four years. Uh, then he, the direct, deputy director general said that by 2023. Yes, we are. Ten years is a good estimate for a project which works well. There are projects that, that didn't work so well. Uh, but we're not even close to the start where uh, the building of such a plant could begin. First of all, where is it going to be? Is it going to be uh, near Jeffreys Bay, which is, was the original proposal? Is it going to be next door to Kuburg? We don't know. And I'm sure the residents there are going to make a fuss about this. Um, also, yes, you said which technology is, is going to be used. Um, again, this, this, is, this is a process that's still going to take a long, long time. Mm. We can see what happened, for example, with these, uh, the uh, other recent proposals for new uh, power, like these uh, car power ship, uh, gas ships and that. Uh, the idea there was that they were going to come almost instantly. We're now several years down the line and we haven't even uh, begun. Mm. Uh, uh, implementing that suggestion. And those chips, uh, that, that would just literally just take a few months to, to sort out, not 10 years construction time. Uh, Prof, you've, uh, of course, uh, mentioned your doubts in terms of if this will ever kick off. You've also said that the commissioning will take, uh, you know, years. In fact, uh, I think uh, 2032 uh, was the, the, the year that was um, suggested there in terms of when the first unit will essentially happen. Um, you've also alluded to the fact that this process could be mired with a number of legal processes, etc. Uh, in fact, the minister alluded to how in the past, you know, such projects were mired in controversy. So given the fact that this might not even take off, what are we looking at in terms of alternatives? Yes, well, that's where I'd be very interested to see this new uh, integrated resource plan for electricity, which apparently has gone through uh, cabinet approval and which is supposed to appear in the government does any day now. So maybe even tonight we might be able to study this. Mm. Now, what that plan is going to do, it's going to look at all the various options. It's going to have no doubt an option which, uh, which is going to uh, suggest uh, keeping the existing coal plants going for as long as possible. It's going to have an option which looks at building as many uh, solar and wind plants as possible. It's going to look at a couple of other options as well. What, uh, I'm sure at least one of them will be including nuclear uh, uh, too. Now, there at least one will be in a position to check how the calculations were done. And uh, typically the, the, the public consultation process would take six months or so. And uh, then we, one, we, 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 it's put up for scrutiny. And uh, generally in the past, what, when, when finally the, the final plan was promulgated, then uh, one had a model that I think most people could, could kind of live with, even though nobody, you can never make everybody happy. But uh, where that's going to be, my, my suspicion is that uh, a very renewable energy intensive program is the best uh, for South Africa. But I don't have the, the figures right here to, to show it. Mm -hmm. I, I suspect that, uh, that this draft plan uh, will assist us in that regard.